you're back here on Sportsline. Another update from Smashville, where the Predators have scored again. Victor Arvidsson for the second time tonight. He becomes the first 20 goal score on the team this season. Pounded one in in the first period. Now he gets one midway through the second. It is Predators four, Senators two. As they look to get back into the win column and move into a first place tie with Winnipeg with the win tonight. We'll, of course, have highlights of that game coming up on the news. Channel 5 tonight at 10 o'clock. Back to college basketball, though. Vanderbilt with another monster win over the weekend. Jeff Roberson, a huge reason why. 24 points a game last week. Nine rebounds a game. Just a monster effort from the senior forward out of Houston to help Vanderbilt win a couple of games at home. It has been a frustrating year for Roberson and the Commodores, but he has been really good in SEC play. And this team appears to be rounding the corner. They have certainly been difficult to play at home in Memorial Gym as of late. Call it Memorial Magic. Call it a young team growing up. Call it whatever you want. But Vanderbilt has won five in a row at home. They beat Mississippi State during the week last week. They beat Florida coming back from 11 down in the second half to win on Saturday. Out of the cellar in the SEC. Starting to win some more games here. Jeff Roberson, a huge reason why. And we caught up with the freshly named SEC Player of the Week after practice today. All right, first person in a year at Vanderbilt to be named SEC Player of the Week. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's great because that means uh, we probably got two wins. So uh, I think that's the most important thing. But I was able to, you know, my coaches put me in a great position and my teammates passed me the ball and I was able to do some things. We got two big wins, so I think that's all that matters. We talked to you about this before this season, but just kind of down this stretch, what's it been like helping to lead this team to these wins? It's been fun. Uh, you've seen guys grow up, uh, guys like Joe playing their best ball of the year and saving and Peyton and guys stepping up every game. I think it was a really testament to what they've been doing all season and how hard they've been working. And I'm just glad it's finally showing off. What about you? Are you playing your best ball of the year over the last few months? Well, I think so. Um, getting pretty comfortable and hit my stride and just trying to you know, be aggressive and make plays happen for myself and for the team. What's been the difference, I guess, kind of as you've gone on this season to, to get to where you are now and what you're performing? Uh, just a lot of practice. Um, I mean, we've still been practicing pretty hard. And uh, the repetition and just getting really comfortable knowing where guys are going to be, where I can get my spots and get my shots as well. So I think that's a lot, a lot to do with it. Can you learn anything from your wins at home? Because you guys have been pretty good at home to take that one on the road and, and learn from that. Yeah, I think we got to find a way uh, on the road to kind of get ourselves going even more and uh, spark ourselves up a little bit. Because here, I mean, the crowd's amazing. So when you're struggling a little bit, you just listen to them and they get you going. So we got to find a way to, to bring that on the road with us. Uh, we did play a tight one, but we feel like we're a much better team than we were uh, that game. So hopefully we can go in there and show it and uh, play for 40 minutes consistently. Does this road thing weigh on you guys? We honestly don't think about it too much. Uh, we're just focusing on one game at a time. And right now we're focused on playing LSU, whether that's here or there. Uh, we feel like we have a chance to get a win. That's what we want to do. It's just crazy, though. I mean, you've been here four years now. For whatever reason, it just hasn't happened this season. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. Um, and we've always, I feel like on the road, we play good for one half, but we've got to put it together for 40 minutes. So that's something we really got to work on. That's what we got to challenge ourselves to do. Coach, talk about it at all? Um, just kind of the differences between the two and the way that he sees you guys play? Uh, he tells us how much harder it is to run on the road and how much tougher we got to be. It's going to be those, those small plays at the end of the game, one or two plays here that make the difference. And that's something we got to focus on. We can't let those plays slip by. You guys start to focus on it because you know that the tournament's coming up soon. It's also not in your gym. Right. Do you realize we need to figure out what's, what's plaguing us, basically, yeah. over these Definitely. The last two weeks? Any postseason plays like we played in your home gym most times, unless it's the NIT or whatever. but. I mean, we got to find a way to take it on the road. And it's got to be us bringing the energy and supporting each other, uh, regardless of who's in the stands. Jeff Roberson and company heading to LSU tomorrow night as they look to make it three straight wins for the Commodores. Bryce Drew, of course, charged with that scouting report, leading this team as they try to, to improve late in the season for the second consecutive year. Last year, in year one, they were 11-13 and 13 when the calendar essentially flipped to February. And they went on a run late, and they obviously got themselves into the NCAA tournament. A much 
deeper hole to climb out of this year with a very young roster aside from Roberson and fellow senior Riley Lachance. But once again, this is a team that's playing its best basketball in February, and that is a good sign. Whatever your record is, wherever you are, you want your teams playing their best basketball late in the season as you get set for March. Bryce Drew once again has Vanderbilt playing its best basketball right now here in the month of February as you get for the SEC tournament in a couple of weeks up in St. Louis this year. Bryce Drew, briefly after practice today to get set for that trip to LSU to take on the Bayou Bengals tomorrow night. Secret to finding a win on the road is... <laughs> shooting as well on the road as we do at home and taking our crowd with us. You know, those two things, those two things might get us over the hump. Psychologically, is there anything you can do at this point to talk to the guys? You know, we haven't really talked about it a lot. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about it. And, uh, you know, we switch some things up on our road trips to try to help. And, um, and hopefully we can get out of it and get our first one. Have you been a part of something like that where it's just been over the whole season? Um, not that I can recall, no. And, uh, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but uh, we're playing really well at home. And uh, the good thing, the conference tournament's on a neutral court and not on an opponent court. So, so that's a good thing, too. Ask you about the gap, too, conference player of the week. Yeah. How much is he in You know, well, first, he's very deserving. He's had a great season, and especially this last stretch, he has been phenomenal. And it was nice we were able to get a couple quality wins back to back, which, you know, helped him also to get that award. But we're really proud of him, and he deserves it. Vandy coach Bryce Drew there talking about Jeff Roberson and, of course, the trip to the Bayou tomorrow night to take on LSU. An 8 o'clock Central start time as Vanderbilt looks for a third in a row. The Belmont women continue to absolutely roll. It's been two plus years since they've lost a game in the OVC, but everybody's taking notice now. Ranked last week for the first time ever. Moved up to number 23 this week after another perfect week. Cameron Neubauer led the foundation or laid the foundation for this Belmont women's basketball program as they swept through the OVC the last couple of years, got to the NCAA tournament in back-to-back -back seasons. But Bart Brooks has come in and he has made this program his. And these young ladies have really responded to the new coaching staff. They've been absolutely outstanding this year and are just crushing people in the Ohio Valley Conference. And again, moved up to number 23 this week. Here's Belmont women's basketball coach Bart Brooks on the Bruins and their success. I guess you guys are used to this now, huh? I mean, yeah, two weeks in, just moving up a spot every time. We didn't talk to you last week, but uh, this has got to be pretty exciting. Right, yeah, we're very excited about it. I mean, we've worked really hard all season long, and so to be here, to be where we are, we're proud of it. But at the end of the day, we also know that this isn't where we want to be. It's not our end goal to um, be ranked. It's great, and we're honored, but we're excited, and we're working hard every day to get a little bit better and see where we can be. You kind of keep just adding two more wins, it seems like, in conference every week. I think we're up to 41, is that right? 41? Yeah. Yep. It's an amazing <laughs> streak. I, mean, it, it, I guess it doesn't feel like it hangs on you at this point because you guys keep snapping off wins, but is it harder than it looks? Um, we talk about it a little bit in the sense of that it's like in school getting a 4.0. Like you have to bring your best every day and work hard every day to be the conference champion and things like that. But Coach Barr always says each game has a life of its own. And so we take every game seriously. We take it and um, focus really in on the team and what we what we got to do to make our make sure it's the best version of Belmont out on the court tonight. You guys are getting close now to the uh, the tournament, and that's obviously the thing. You win the tournament to get into the, the big dance. Are you think you're thinking a little bit about that, about what you guys need to do to kind of set the pace there? Um, I would say we're excited for the tournament. It's not at the top of our list yet because we still have two more games to focus on and um, get through those and play well. And so at the end of the day, we know that we're working for something greater, and we're working hard in practice just to improve little things to put us where we want to be come tournament time. Does this feel a little bit different this year? Because I remember like two years ago coming to when you guys were going to get selected. And right. It's exciting and, and all that stuff. But now, I mean, this feels like a team that the ceiling might be a little higher. Yeah, um, it's exciting where we are right now. We've had, like you said, the past two years a little bit experience, a little bit exposure. And some of our seniors have paved the way for us. And so being where we are now, we have a little bit under our belt, um, but also just the energy. We're 
more excited and since we got that taste we're ready to see where we can go with it. Is it now like an expectation? Has that, has that standard been set for this team? Um, I would say that it's something that we pride ourselves on. It's something that we hold each other accountable for, working our best. We don't slack off in that sense. Um, as an expectation, really, it's just to play our best and work our best. And then at the end of the day, we know we'll be happy with how we end up. Hey, Jenny, the, the first half uh, on Thursday, the first really game since the team was nationally ranked, it might have been the best half of the year, uh, 11 of 14 from three. Can you just talk about Maybe you and your teammates talked about that and living up to a ranking? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something when you have that little number by your name. Um, and just to wear a Belmont on our chest every night, we're so proud to like represent our university. And being at a home game, the curb was rocking and people were here and cheering. So um, you can definitely feel the energy from the inside out and through the locker room, through practice. And we just came to play, and it was, a, it was just a fun game. Your eyes and ears did not deceive you. That was not Bart Brooks. That was Jenny Roy of the Belmont starting five on the women's basketball team that just absolutely continues to pummel people. That performance in the first half on Thursday night against Eastern Kentucky was the stuff of legend as they continue to just roll through people in the OVC. And this is a team that's going to the NCAA tournament whether they win the conference title or not. And they're going to have a shot. I mean, they were in the mix last year against Kentucky in the opening round of the NCAA tournament and just came up short at the buzzer. Had a shot at the end there. They're going to have another shot against somebody because they're going to get a decent seed. And they are talented. And they shoot it as well as anybody in this country. Belmont is going to have a legitimate shot to win games in the women's field this year. And they're going to be a lot of fun to watch when they get there. So... We will keep tabs on them for sure. We have them. So let, let's go to a little bit more before we head to our next break of Bart Brooks, the Belmont head coach, about what's going on with the Bruins this year. The girls surprised you on Saturday, Saturday, just the way they came out? No, I mean, I expected it. Um, that was, uh, for us, that was a championship. You know, we had, we had clinched a share of the title on Thursday, and Saturday we knew we were playing for the outright OVC regular season championship, which was really the first goal that we set out every year to, to achieve. So um, I expected that kind of effort and energy, and, and I, was, I was thrilled that they brought it. And don't, don't get me wrong, I was thrilled about it, but I expected it. How important is that, the, the regular season and the pecking order of things for you guys? Uh, you know, it's probably the most important thing we talk about because it, it's a reflection of what we do every single day. And for, you, for a team to win a league, that means you have to be really consistent at home, really consistent on the road, and it's it's a reflection of how you perform the whole you know two month stretch of the conference season, and that's our first goal every year is to win our conference championship. So, head coach's job is kind of to worry about things, I guess. That's what most For sure. coaches are really good at. And um, you guys are ranked. You've won these all these conference games in a row. We're getting down to the end of the regular season. If you start to think, you know, I know it's a week ahead. If you start to think, oh my God, what if we don't? Does that start to creep in your head? Well, when you put it that way, it does. But no, um, you know what? It, it really doesn't because I, I try to take my own advice and focus on the next game that's ahead of us. And, you know, watching film at Jacksonville State, they're a really, really good team. And we're going to have to go on the road and play a really good team in a really tough place to play on Wednesday. And if I just focus on that, that's, that's going to keep me up at night plenty, not worrying about that other stuff coming down the road. So. Yes.